Hello, everyone. I'm Yuxin Chen from UC Davis. Today, I'm presenting our work, ATOS. It is a task parallel GPU dynamic scheduler for graph analytics. Here's today's agenda. We will start the talk with our problem domain, dynamic irregular applications. Next, we will discuss the performance challenges of current GPU implementations for irregular applications. Then we will show our solutions, which are validated by our experimental results. Firstly, let's look at our problem domain. Dynamic irregular computations usually work on unstructured data structures, such as graphs, trees, and meshes. The computations on those data structures often involve iterative computing or traversing um, and are often dynamic and irregular. Therefore, the GPU utilization is often poor for dynamic irregular applications. We firstly show a general form of dynamic irregular application on GPUs. This general form has an outer loop on the CPU side and an inner loop on the GPU side. For each inner loop task, there is a third loop iterating over the workload of that task. We can express many dynamic irregular applications in this general form, for example, BFS. We show the pseudocode on the right side. The BFS GPU implementation uses double buffer scheme. At the beginning, we initialize the in front here by the source vertex. Then on the CPU side, we have a well loop which launches CUDA kernels onto the in front here until the in front here is empty. Inside the kernel, the vertices in the in front here are processed in parallel and for each vertex, its neighbors are visited. If that neighbor is not visited before, the neighbor will be added to the out front here. When all the vertices in the in front here are processed, mm -hmm. the CUDA kernel exits and the out frontier generated by the CUDA kernel becomes the new in frontier for the next iteration. Our goal here is to increase GPU utilization and therefore increase GPU performance for this general form. Besides BFS, this general form works for other graph algorithms such as page rank or graph coloring and also works for non-graph algorithms such as Delaunay refinement or retracing. This general form could help us analyze the GPU utilization issues. The first issue, we call it the small frontier problem because the GPU will be underutilized when the number of tasks in the frontier fed to the kernel is not enough to saturate the GPU. Take a BFS as an example. We show a simple graph on the right side and its corresponding frontier for each iteration below the graph. For BFS, the frontier also has a topology meaning that the vertices in the same frontier have the same depths. As you can see from this example, the frontier is dynamically generated from the previous iteration and the size of each frontier varies. In this example, the frontier of the first iteration and the last iteration apparently has the small frontier problem. In general, the small frontier problem comes from two aspects. The application itself is limited by the available paladin that cannot fully utilize the GPU hardware. This underutilization problem is further worsened by launching many kernels with little paladin. As a result, the majority time goes to the CPU preparing, launching, and ending the kernels. The small frontier problem can be seen on many graph algorithms. For example, BFS. We plot the frontier size against the iteration for traditional BFS BSP implementation. The left plot is BFS on scale-free dataset, and the right plot is BFS on mesh-like dataset. On the left figure, the first and the last few iterations, there is not enough work fed to the GPU. 
The small frontier problem in the rap plot is worse. Firstly, it requires many iterations to finish, and the number of tasks in all frontiers are only on the magnitude of 10 to the power 4. However, modern GPUs at least require 10 to the power 5 concurrent threads to separate. When we look inside the kernel, here comes the second GPU utilization issue. It is the load imbalance issue. The issue comes from the situation that the cost of task varies. As a result, all threads wait for the slowest one and leaving GPU underutilized. Take a BFS as an example. When we propagate the depth information of a vertex to all its neighbors, some vertices can have many neighbors, such as in the graph shoes. The red vertex has four neighbors, and therefore its workload is four. Some vertices can have few neighbors, such as the green vertex shown in the graph, whose workload is only one. The traditional BSP implementations often use various load balancing techniques to alleviate the load imbalance issue but they are generally complex to implement and may add a non-trivial overhead. Sometimes it is a challenge to pick up the right techniques for a particular programs. In summary, for dynamic irregular applications, we identify two main issues that lowering the GPU utilization. They are the small frontier problem and the loading balance. We are instead proposing a task pallid model. In our task pallid model, we remove the GPU wide synchronization to expose more pallid. Using persistent kernel to reduce kernel launch overhead, those two are able to alleviate the small frontier problem. The task pallid model we use provides implicit load balancing as the tasks are processed asynchronously. Lastly, we flexibly incorporate the data paladin with the task paladin in our framework to achieve better load balancing. In this slide, we want to give an overview of our framework ATOS. In ATOS, CUDA threads are organized into independent workers. Those workers in ATOS run asynchronously, and the threads within the worker run synchronously. ATOS is essentially a dynamic scheduler built around our high-performance asynchronous queue. This queue is required to support massive concurrent pop and push. The code on the right side describes ATOS in the high level. In the high level, ATOS maintains a queue of tasks, and workers pop tasks from the queue, process the tasks, and potentially add a newly generated task back to the queue. The program runs until either a stop condition is met or the queue is empty. The performance of ATOS is largely dependent on the performance of our asynchronous queue. Therefore, our asynchronous queue has to be high performed. We do several benchmarks for the asynchronous queue. We run concurrent push, which each thread push to the queue 10 times. We run concurrent pop where each thread pop from the queue 10 times. And we run concurrent push and pop where each thread push and then pop from the queue 10 times without synchronization between push and pop. We implement those benchmarks with two variants of ATOS asynchronous queue. One uses warp worker and another uses 512 CTA worker. We choose the state-of-art GPU asynchronous queue, worker queue as our baseline. For concurrent pop, we also implement an atomic cast-based queue as another comparison. The three figures show the runtime on the y-axis as the number of threads increases, so does the contention. In those figures, the flat the line is, the better the performance. In our benchmarks, ATOS asynchronous queue with 512 threads CTA worker performs the best. We would like to mention a notable feature of ATOS. It is a configurable framework. ATOS supports 
both persistent kernel and discrete kernel. It also provides flexible worker size. One can choose from single thread worker, warp thread worker, or city thread worker. It also allows user to define pop size to achieve better load balancing. Let's see what we do to improve GPU utilization in more details. Our first step is to remove the GPU-wide synchronization. And instead of using double buffers, we use a centralized asynchronous queue. Because we remove the global synchronization, we no longer have the data consistency guarantee as before. In BFS, this means we may process vertices with different depths concurrently. Therefore, we need to modify the algorithm to ensure correctness. We can ensure the correctness by correcting those errors resulting from data inconsistency. Take a BFS as an example. Because vertices with different depths are processed concurrently, we need to use the atomic mean operation to guarantee no update is over overwritten. We can also choose those algorithms that are robust to removing the synchronization, such as PageRank. More details of asynchronous algorithm and the pseudocode can be found in our paper. Our second step is to reduce the kernel launch overhead. This is done by using persistent kernel to move the scheduling used to be on the CPU side onto the GPU side. The advantages of using persistent kernel include reducing kernel launch overhead and the CPU involvement. However, persistent kernel has higher registry usage than discrete kernel, therefore lower GPU occupancy. It also requires atomic operations on the shared queue data structure. The advantages of using discrete kernel is its simplicity and a lower register usage. However, if it has higher kernel launch overhead, if the kernel is small, the kernel launch overhead cannot be amortized. Since the workers run asynchronously and the thread within worker run synchronously, we find the task parallel and the data parallel are not exclusive. We consider a continuous spectrum with pure data parallel and a pure task parallel on the two extremes, and using the worker size as the important parameter to adjust the trade-off between task parallel and the data parallel. On the left extreme, we set the worker size to a single thread. Then we have no data parallel and only task parallel. On the right extreme, we set each worker to be a whole GPU. Then we have a pure data parallel and it becomes the BSP model. We think for different applications, the optimal trade-off will be different. It also allows a flexible mixture of data parallel and a task parallel. For example, we can have warp worker. Or we can have a CTA size worker with 256 threads. Or we can have CTA size worker with 512 threads. We run our case studies on two types of datasets. The scale-free datasets have low diameter and a high average degree. They are often fat and short and are generated from social networks. The other type is the mesh-like datasets, which have high diameter and a low average degree. They are often skinny and long. Our first case study is BFS. We compare four different implementations. Gunrock is the state-of-art graph analytics GPU implementation. We choose Gunrock BFS as our baseline. We also implement three variants of BFS on ATOS, asynchronous warp worker with persistent kernel, asynchronous CTA worker with persistent kernel, and the synchronous CTA worker with discrete kernel. We plot the speed up of those three variants over the baseline Gunrock version. The best performed implementation is ATOS asynchronous implementation with persistent kernel and the CTA worker size. The speedup is most significant on mesh-like datasets. 
where the small frontier problem is severe. Our second case study is graph coloring. We implemented three ATOS variants. They are asynchronous warp worker with persistent kernel, asynchronous warp worker with discrete kernel, and asynchronous CTA worker with persistent kernel. The graph coloring algorithm is not available in GANRAC. Instead, we faithfully implemented the BSP version of the graph coloring algorithm. The top figure shows the speed up of different ATOS variants comparing to the BSP graph coloring baseline. From the results, the best performed implementation is ATOS asynchronous warp worker with persistent kernel. The speed up is most significant on scale free datasets, where the small frontier problem is severe. Our third case study is page rank. We again consider the same three ATOS variants. We use GANRAC page rank as our baseline for comparison. The figure shows the speed up of the three ATOS variants compared to the GANRAC page rank baseline. From the results, ATOS asynchronous CTA worker with both persistent kernel and the discrete kernel performed the best. We highlight the fact that significant speed up is achieved even though there is no small frontier. Instead, the speed up of ATOS is due to lower overhead and a bad, better load balancing. Let's conclude today's presentation. Many GPU implementations of irregular applications underutilize the GPU resource because of problems such as the small frontier problem or loading balance problem. In those cases, we encourage you to use ATOS to improve the performance by increasing GPU utilization. If your application has the small frontier problem, we recommend you to use the persistent kernel in ATOS. Otherwise, this quick kernel is recommended for its simplicity. We also encourage users to modify the algorithm to remove the GPU-wide synchronization to expose more concurrency. Some algorithms can be robust to reordering, such as page rank. Or for some algorithms, we can fix the mistakes resulted from removing the global synchronization, such as BFS. If, you are, if your application has loading balance problem, ATOS, ATOS provides a nice worker abstract to help you find the best combination of task parallelism and the data parallelism for better performance. For instance, in our three case studies, BFS and PageRank both achieve better performance with CTA worker size, while graph coloring achieve better performance with warp worker size. We have extended this work to multi-GPUs. The same idea works for both single-node multi-GPU system and multi-node systems. You can read more detail about our multi-GPU extension in our outcoming supercomputing paper, Scalable Irregular Parallelism with GPUs, Getting CPUs Out of the Way. Lastly, we want to thank NSF, DARPA, NVIDIA, and ASCR for funding this work. That's it for today's presentation. Thanks for listening.